Welcome back to Fact Up, where we uncover the curious and often overlooked corners of everyday life. Today, we delve into a topic that might make you rethink the phrase, talking to oneself. Is it just a quirky habit, or could it be a gateway to greater self-understanding and cognitive benefits? Let's find out. Ever found yourself muttering under your breath about misplaced keys or rehearsing a tough conversation that's coming up? It turns out, these seemingly mundane acts of talking to ourselves are not only common, but scientifically significant. This phenomenon, known as private speech, serves as a mental Swiss army knife, aiding in focus, memory, and emotional regulation. But what's really happening in our brains during these solo chats? When we verbalize our thoughts, we engage specific areas of the brain associated with language and problem solving. This isn't just about hearing our own voice, it's about structuring our thoughts more effectively and boosting our cognitive processing. Interestingly, self-talk is not a modern phenomenon, but rather a deeply ingrained human practice. Historical records and psychological studies suggest that our ancestors likely used self-directed speech as a tool for survival, helping them to plan and execute complex tasks. The extensive research into this fascinating aspect of human behavior was first pioneered by Soviet psychologist Lev Vygotsky in the early 20th century. Vygotsky highlighted how children use self-talk during their developmental stages, which evolves into inner speech as they grow. Fast forward to today, and we see that this internal dialogue has evolved into a critical component of our mental toolkit. From professional athletes to renowned scientists, successful individuals harness the power of self-talk to sharpen their focus and master their crafts. But does the way we talk to ourselves differ by gender? While research doesn't point to a significant difference in the frequency of self-talk between men and women, it suggests there might be variations in content. Women may engage more in emotional regulation, while men might use self-talk to boost confidence in competitive settings. And what about children? This self-communication plays a pivotal role in their development too. It helps young minds to learn and assimilate new concepts, enhancing their language skills and social understanding through playful monologues. Moreover, engaging in self-dialogue can be a form of emotional self-care. It allows us to navigate our feelings more clearly and can be a powerful tool in managing mental health. However, it's important to note when self-talk might indicate deeper issues. If the voice you hear isn't recognizably your own, or if it commands rather than converses, it might be time to consult a professional. So next time you catch yourself in a lively chat with me, myself, and I, remember, you're engaging in a practice that's as old as humanity itself and one that could be enhancing your brain's performance. Thank you for tuning in to Fact Up. If you enjoyed diving into the science and history of talking to oneself, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more fascinating explorations into how we think and interact with the world around us.